by the auto master class kuchelewa <coughs> na 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 tujue we are not moving to town eh uh, not any time soon our instruction was very clear wilderness so we are hard to find for a reason uh, there are times when the church needs to go through a john the baptist moment do you know what a john the baptist moment is have you ever studied John the Baptist? He declared Jesus is coming and that's it. Eh? He ate locusts. He was beheaded. Do you know what he told the Pharisees once? So they came to him in the wilderness. And he told them. And he told them. You brood of vipers, who warned you of the destruction to come? Imagine that. So imagine, come, uh, rish, gish, gish, yes, come, gish. So imagine you are a preacher of the gospel of God, okay? And you're teaching people to repent. Then I tell gish, gish, what are you doing here? Who told you? How have you escaped being destroyed? You know, people are used to nice preachers. Can you imagine being told that? You brood of vipers, who warned you of the destruction to come? <laughs> How do you feel? <laughs> Why would John say that? Where, when it Elder Wakanisa? Mr. Minor. <laughs> Yes, why would John say that? Peculiar? Omekwa worship leader, intercessor. Why would John say that? No, no. The, 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 the. Do you know what's the interesting thing about Pharisees? Do you realize Pharisees were not created, were not an institution instituted by God? Okay? God never said, and you shall have Pharisees. So Pharisees are as a result of people who just sat and decided that, you know what, we will form a class of people called Pharisees. Okay? Now, 70 years later, of course, there was a huge um, war over Jerusalem and it was destroyed together with the temple. You know this. It's not in the Bible but Jesus prophesied it when he said no stone will be left on the other. Okay. Now when John is saying that he's speaking about a specific kind of Christian. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. When, when John is saying you brood of vipers who warned you of the dangers to come he is talking about a specific kind of Christian, which is a dangerous kind. It is the kind that has made God into their own image. Okay? Now, let me explain to you idol worship before Christ. Idol worship before Christ used to be this is Baal. Okay? We worship Baal. Correct? Now, by the time Jesus came, you notice, by the time you're reading the last few prophets, like in Malachi, like in Hosea, was it Hosea? The guys who were there during the reformation of Ezra and Nehemiah, they don't talk about so much about idol worship because by the time the children of Israel came back from Babylon, they were done with Baal. Okay? But idol worship was not yet done. So what is idol worship? Idol worship is when 
I decide that God is nice. Okay? And therefore, because God is nice, I make theology around God's niceness. Not the theology of the Bible, but my own. Am I making sense? So I, for example, the belief, okay, that if you get born again, you're never supposed to be sick. So you've heard that theology, okay? It is because the assumption is that God is somehow always nice. So when you are sick, you've actually backslidden. You've heard that theology, right? Okay? Now, we know that is not the God of the Bible, correct? So what have we done? We've made God after an image in our own imagination. And that is an idol. Do you get it? Yes. Now, the worst part about this kind of idol is you keep worshipping it and you get angry at the real God because the God you worship is not doing what you expect yet you're not worshipping the right God. Do you get it? It is the same indictment uh, against high places in the Old Testament. God was not just against high places. High places are interesting. When Judas split with Israel, the king of Israel decided that these guys can't go to Jerusalem. Okay? If they go to Jerusalem, the king of Judah will one have no more money because they'll go give their tithes there. And then two, if a population moves for Passover and things like that into this one country that is not yours, then Israel is left empty. Sindio. So he decided, no problem, I will make altars for you in Samaria. Started in Bethel. And created his own order of priests. To worship who? Jehovah. Do you understand? Now God comes and judges that altar. Okay? Now I want you to picture it. The person being worshipped is Jehovah. When you sacrifice, you say, I'm sacrificing to Jehovah. When you sing, you say, I'm singing to Jehovah. When you give, you say, you're giving to Jehovah. And yet Jehovah comes and says, this is not my altar. And that, by the way, is the problem of the church today. That we've created traditions and imaginations and decided it is God. Just the same way, I'll give you one of the idols we have in Kenya. One of the idols we have in Kenya is called Ngai, Nyasai, Were, all of those things. Now we keep saying that Ngai is God. See, we've said that. Did you see the Nairobi businessmen when they started their meeting and they faced Mount Kenya and they did what? To who? Was that Ngai Jehovah? Do you see? But we like to take God and fit him into our circumstance. In fact, part of our idol worship is when we ask questions like, why do bad things happen to good people? You know what you've just done? You've decided you are God and you can judge what is good or bad. Oh, I prove it to you. You shall eat the tree of the knowledge of good and then you will be like God knowing what is good. So what, do we, what are we doing when we step into that scenario? We want to tell God how to be God. <laughs> can we talk the truth you see if God is God we cannot tell him whether tsunamis are good or bad it is 
his world, his choice. You get? Just the same way your children cannot come to you and tell you, by there to Pendangi Ugali. From today, Ken, at Kulangi Ugali. And we've decided every time you give us Ugali, you don't love us. See, that's what we do. It is called making God after your own image. So idol worship has stopped being physical. It's become something about the state upon which we perceive and want to treat God. Sir? Even your introduction, Yangu, I did not expect to teach that today because that's not the topic. <laughs> Just a bit of understanding for you that we will discuss these topics much later down the road. That is appetizer. Uh, we will have the main meal one day. Ken, are you okay? Your facial expressions keep... <laughs> so, has that made sense? Any questions so far about modern idol worship? Keep it short. You ask long questions. <laughs> hmm? okay. Elam needs a PA. Nixon, when you pay Elam, congratulations. <laughs> okay. No, for, for passing around the microphone. Because that. Uh, uh, my question... Uh, it's uh, not by force, it's a request. <laughs> Don't take me wrong. Yeah. Uh, okay, I wanted to ask you, and who receives this, idol, this false worship? Because as we understand, it's not God, that is not the true God who receives it. Ah, okay. Let me help you, okay? We've always been taught, okay, that the devil wants us to worship him. Cindy? If that is Isaiah 14, 12. No, no, that is Lucifer. And I'll teach, you, you know you're not even ready for me to teach about Lucifer because you'll <laughs> kick me out. So while I dig, dig this foundation, Lucifer, give me two, three months. Huh? But I'll give you a hint. The devil does not want you to worship him. That's not tempting. You get because once you know him, it is not exciting. Do you know who he wants you to worship? Yourself. There is no greater person we like to worship than ourselves. And can I define to you how you love to worship yourself? You love to provide for yourself. <laughs> Let me prove it to you. If you eat this fruit, you will be like knowing good. First thing, after he eats the fruit, okay, what is the first thing Adam does? He clothes himself. First thing. Before then, God clothed him with his presence. Immediately he falls, Adam clothes himself. Okay? When he's leaving the garden, God tells him, because you've chosen to be your own God, you shall now eat from the sweat of your. So how you know you like to worship yourself is you like to provide for yourself. So you are in a crisis every time you don't have money, even though your life is going on just fine. Eh? Can we teach the truth? That's how you know. It is the highest form of self-worship. Because you do not rely on God. So even your prayers are based on money. Oh God, if you give me money, I'll give to master class. Oh God, if you give me money, I'll focus more. Oh God, if you give me money, I'll be able to sort rent. Let me always ask a question. Do you want rent sorted? No, in fact, do you want a house to live in or do you want to pay rent? What's your problem? You know, you need to understand what are the basics. 
Because there are times when God won't provide money for rent, but he's provided shelter. Is there a problem? But because you don't have money, this is how you walk around in Tao. Things are hard, but we thank God. <laughs> you need to overcome yourself and you rely on God. You see, when you rely on God, you must get to the point whether your landlord kicks you out of your house or kicks you into the house, you're still fine. That's what it means to rely on God. I have a very simple philosophy. If I don't have it, then surely I don't need it. It does not matter how short the deadline is. It doesn't matter if the very next minute I'm going to be kicked out. If I don't have it, I don't need it. Why? Because if my father who loves me enough to send his son to die for me is not concerned about my rent, then rent is not important. It is obvious, isn't it? You know, I don't know why I'm teaching this anyway. I usually take 30 minutes to do a topic that's not on topic. But let me teach you this. The biggest problem that Christians suffer from is understanding that God genuinely loves you. Genuine. You say it, you think it, but you genuinely don't believe it. And I'll prove to you how you don't believe it. If your mother calls you and tells you, tomorrow I'll buy you lunch, your state of mind now changes. You're like, Tunenda Wapi, Kempinski, Java, Makibanda, what will I wear? Tutakutana na Sangapi. You start planning your life around your mother's promise, correct? If I give you a check and I sign it and you put it in the bank, you start planning what you will spend that money on, correct? When God tells you something, what do you do? I'll tell you what you usually do. It will happen if it will happen. You don't bank on it. You don't plan around it. You don't act like you are sure. Oh, see, we talk the truth. So you are waiting that someday, somehow, sometime in the future, God will do it. That's the Christian mentality. It is the same mentality if I ask you, will God do a good thing for you tomorrow? Many of us, our answer will be, yes, 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 because you've been taught to say God is good all the time and all the time God is good and that's his nature and that's why he deserves a high five. And if you're from Baringo Secondary, you say, wow, at the end. That's what you've been taught. But you honestly believe that God is good to you. Do you honestly believe that God wants to do a good thing for you? Do you honestly believe that God will provide for you? If you want to know whether you believe or not, just check how you budget. Where you're looking on your budgeting. If you're always looking in your wallet, you know where your God lives. Oh, can I teach the truth? Because that's where God lives. Now, if you've lived long enough on this earth, you must know, and I know this very personally, that budgeting is impossible. In as much as we teach it, it's impossible. Which of you, the month has gone exactly the way you planned? Hands up. Which of you, you, you are exactly where you, you know how you say you plan your future? 
How many of you are exactly where you planned when you were 18? Okay, too far? Two years ago. January? Some of you, even if I said last week. But yet, because Babylon taught you to this day, you try to manage God within your budget. Then God shows up and tells you, I want you to own a home. Then you put your boss in trouble. When are you promoting me? Because your God can only come through one. Can I teach the truth? You see, <laughs> Akina Ken will tell you, because we are on Facebook Live, I'll not say the whole story, but you understand because you're in the group. Akina Ken will tell you that the events of today, I dreamt about many, many months ago. Ken, am I saying the truth? Dreamt about it. Okay? Living it today. Do you know why? I've learned to take God at face value. Yani, his credit is good with me. You understand? So my wife will tell you, our lifestyle does not change based on how much money we have. True or false? We eat the same thing. The only thing we are allowed is to upgrade. We can upgrade, we can't downgrade. You know why? It's because God is good to you. You see, you need to look at Elijah's diet when the country is in doubt, in drought. Just look at his diet. For half the time, he's eating meat. Meat. Listen, kuna drought. What is the first thing that dies? But you, you eat meat. Then you meet this widow. Let me tell you how you would have said Elijah is proud. Start this process. You meet a widow. She's about to make some bread. Eat and? Some bread, correct? What does Elijah ask for? A cake. Read your Bible correctly. Sasa ulikuwa changanye chumvi, yeast, na unga. To make bread. This guy tells you, ongeza mayai, maziwa, Scary blue band. <laughs> Just imagine. I, I don't know that you understand. Muta wa kujia kwa kwa na kumbi umemwambi ya tuta kutengene zaka chapo kamuisho to die. Usa kumbi ya zi mno mno nda chapo ni make any cake. Kuskiza. Don't make for you. Make for. This is how much Elijah was confident about his God. He's like, listen, if you don't have faith, this is how I look you up. This is how I look you up. Serve me. Then when you serve me, this grace I have comes upon you. Do you understand? Do you believe God that genuinely? And when he tells you, you know... Let me tell you, if you call your dad akwambie, hey, usijali na kutumia 10K, it's done, right? God has told you he's got you sorted. That even if they arrest you and put you in jail, you know that you know that you know he's got you. That's where you've got to be with God. That's what faith means. Faith to me means taking God's word for granted. He said it, that is enough for me. Do you understand? You know, a lot of you, you think breakthrough is when you pray, oh God, rent, 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 28th, 29th, 30th, oh God, 
30 at midnight, Mpesa, oh Lord, you are faithful. He was faithful when he spoke. He was faithful when he spoke. Oh, there's, let me tell you, there are so many times I have to pay a bill and they call me in the morning. I hardly have five bob. And I ask God, what should I tell them? And they, he says, tell them afternoon. I'm be able afternoon. And every time I've had God, he's been faithful. So, truly take your time and believe this God. Genuinely. Not just religiously, because if you backslide, we will laugh at you. No. Just genuinely believe he loves you and he cares for you. And he wants the best for you. And what he has promised you, he is faithful to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. So can I start the topic of the day? Marambili. <laughs> Today I want us to ask ourselves a few questions. And I took a pause from the kingdom of light to tackle the issue of how do you deal with the kingdom of darkness. Because for the bulk of us, we still think deliverance is when we dirtify people and they roll around the floor. Okay? Yes, sir. Maswali is a group. Is it copy? No, no, no. The questions from the group about this class. Don't worry. I'll tell you when. Let me dig a foundation. Okay? So, we've been taught that all your problems come from the devil. So when you don't have money, there is a demon that has held your blessing. Okay. When you're not married, it is a generational curse. You know your great-grandfather had 16 wives and now, okay. Then you've been taught that the reason why you fell sick is there is a witch's coven near where you moved. When you lihama, kuna uchawi. And so, we need to do a deliverance, correct? And then you've been told there's a principality over Nairobi. And they've seen it in the spirit. It is a huge snake hit sitting over the city of Nairobi, correct? All right? And then you are told you need to have the Joshua anointing. So you removed your shoes and where the soles of your feet stepped, you cleaned. See, that's what you've been taught. Okay. So let us begin to count. How many of you have acres of land because you walked bare feet? Okay. Zero. How many of you have been totally healthy because you cast out every demon of sickness? Zero. Okay. How many of you have been accident free because you covered the car and the road with the blood of Jesus? I'm mean, just asking. Because if you do a process, it must yield a. Okay. How many of you have ever been prayed from car? You rolled on the ground. I have. And I've prayed for people and they rolled on the ground. So don't be shy. You've never rolled. Uh, where <laughs> and then you wake up, your life is still the same, isn't it? You don't want to kill We, we have to ask ourselves the question that what really is deliverance? That's the question. Because the church is full of binding. We like 
binding. And we bind the spirit of, and the spirit of, and that other spirit. And then a week later, same pastor, same church, binding the same spirit. Will you bind in a rubber band? What can I skip? There are many. So you've got to go through all of hell naming them by name. Ah, okay. And that makes sense. Okay, now let's assume there are many. So, in Kenya, we are around 40 million people. So let's say there's at least 1 million demon-chasing, tongue-speaking Christians. Correct? Who are binding demons. Okay? Now assume they bind demons once a week in a year. So they've bound 52 million demons. See, to find mathematics. And if they've done it for the last 10 years alone, they've bound 520 million demons. If you multiply that, let's assume each country, there are just 100 countries that are praying like that. So in the last 10 years, 520 million times 100 is 52 billion demons. What is left? You know, I say Christians are insane, you think I'm joking. Because we don't know mathematics. Are there 520 billion demons? That means everyone is possessed. Because we are 7 million, we are possessed 80 times. Each of us. That's why Shakespeare said that the madman sees more demons than vast hell can hold. The church sees demons everywhere. Half of our theology comes from demons. Okay? You, you, Johnston, come, I deliver you. I show you how we do deliverance. Come, come, come. So I'm holding a microphone. This is my microphone. Toka. Sema stoki. Toka. Stoki. Toka. Stoki. Ume toka hapi. Mombasa. Mombasa hapi. Kilifi. Kilifi. Ndani ya bahari. Eh, ndani ya bahari. Ame toka kwa bahari. Ume kuja kufaya nini? Ime kuja ku... Kuangamiza watu. Ume angamiza wanga hapi. Miambili. Miambili. Ame amgizmiza watu miambili. Stretch your hands. See, that's how they teach. Okay, let me ask you a question. Okay? When the devil speaks, what is his nef- native language? She lies. So why are we interrogating a liar? No, I just want to ask you a question. When the devil speaks, he lies. So when he says he's from Mombasa, why do we believe him? Hey, can I just ask? This is why we seem insane. You've been told he speaks lies. Okay? Then you ask him, okay, listen, someone has just conned you off of your money. Okay? Then you ask him, unaishi wapi? Then he tells you, will you believe him? But we write books. Okay? Now, even worse, you may see it. You may see it. Even worse, someone comes out of devil worship. Then he comes and tells you what they used to. He was lied to all his life. Do you honestly think that the devil told them the truth. So when they come and write a book about how it works, is it really how it works? So how come we formed entire doctrines and entire churches based on that? Huh? Now some people don't eat things because some chawi said, umetoka wapi? Nilikuwa ndani ya coconut. Or because you saw a clip 
and some guy from Mombasa told you, Wachawi, they turn into cats. Ah, see now the devil knows you've had that theology. Your neighbor has cats. So every time you start praying, those older cats that sound like people, meow, meow, are in your neighborhood. Now you, you think prayers, me, bamba. In your imagination, you can see angels with swords showing up, fighting against cats. <laughs> That's what you imagine. You see me, I've done these things. Spiritual warfare. I started praying, because it's the best one. There was a heaviness in the spirit. And I broke. Eh? I prayed until I broke through. And it was about three in the morning and I slept. In fact, at work I was just tired. You didn't win nothing. The devil won. He wanted you to be tired at work. <laughs> See, we interrogate these things a little bit. I didn't just ask. Okay? So let me go through all your questions. And where is Rose? Could someone please call Rose? Someone please call Rose. I don't want to go through this. Let's go through the questions, Ilam, if you could put them here. Huh? At Yakuna Net. Tukubaye data. For once he's speechless. <laughs> Someone get a microphone and read me the questions. There was a hashtag, right? So the first question is Swaliangu ni does kutupiwa ugonjwa happen? Okay. From where I come from, this has been uh, an issue for years. Ama ni lack of faith. Okay. Uyo ni mluya, sindio? Okay. No, I know because that's something uh, I used to be warned about when I was a kid. Ukienda ocha, mtu anaza kutupia ugonjwa. Okay? Now, first, let's start here. We are scientists. Okay? As in, we know science now. Okay? And you know, if I have the flu, and I sneeze, you will probably catch the flu. See, we know that. Should I answer that question even more? You know, it's, it's, it's funny how our grandparents formed a belief based on something we know is scientific now, and then we still teach it. Do you get it? Okay, so you could be Ogonzoa. Let's go to the next one. I'll answer them shortly, very short answers, because I want us to go to scripture. I just want to have all the questions spoken out. Uh -huh. Okay, what did Charles, I think this is Charles Opio mm -hmm. they're referring to? What did the Charles angel say? one will do at the end. You remind me. Why, have, why haven't angels seen God? Okay. So that's a question. Uh, yeah. Yes. Ah, yeah. Now the other one is very long. Mm. Uh, what is the problem with waking up between midnight and 3 a.m. to pray? Or 6 a.m., uh, 12 noon, 3 p.m.? Remember, praying is okay. daily. Just pause there. Have you noticed all those times? 12 to 3, 6 a.m., noon, 3 p.m. Sindio? There are two schools of thoughts. Number one is because people read that Christ used to wake up at certain hours and go pray. That's one. And that's kind of okay. The second one is about when witches are active. Sindio? So Nambiwa at 3 a.m. Suji the moon and Suji what has done what? And which has have the most power. So if you wake up at 3 a.m., your power and their power can fight. Sindio? See, that's what you've been taught. Okay. So I have a question. Between you and the witch, who's causing who to pray? Okay. Question. Let me ask. 
My prayer is to God, sindio? The witch's prayer at the very least is ukuchini, sindio? Why am I panicking when this guy is praying? He should be the one who's panicking when I'm praying. Okay, let's think about it. Okay? If your child tells you ntakuchapa, which one of you worries? Okay. But you can be your child in Takuchapa. So between the witch and me, who should be planning the activities around the other? The witch should be praying because I am praying. Eh. Okay, let me give you an example from the Bible. Remember a guy called Balaam? He wants to curse the children of Israel. Did God tell the children of Israel to intercede? Should I continue? You see, once you are blessed, you can't be cursed. It's like, let me tell you how it is. It's like you are five kids in a family. Okay? Your firstborn can threaten you. Daddy ntakucha utachapwa. Daddy akikam. Takuchapa. Sindio. But if your dad comes and says sita kuchapa, can your elder brother curse you with beatings? I continue. Actually, you should let me finish the questions because they get funnier that way. <laughs> like now here, it's uh, remembering prayer. Uh, remembering prayer is daily. Mm -hmm. Anytime, anywhere. Mm -hmm. But what time is peak time? <laughs> you see, you would have answered it differently if I had well, finished. Stop laughing at people's questions. Yeah. Stop. Anyway, so let's move to question number two. And no laughing. Okay. Now, let me answer that question. You know, the people who are laughing are also very disingenuous because they recently got delivered. Because I've had that laughter, so I know who's laughing. They recently it's, got it's not delivered. Bunnies. It's not bunnies. From worshipping quiet time. So it used to be early in the morning, I have to read my Bible, pray. Okay? Because that is when you program your morning. But how many of us have programmed their morning? Commanded. Commanded, yes. <laughs> Since you've done that, I want you to go to the book of Job. Eh? Find it. I forget where it is. It says, command your morning. And I want us to read it. Let me just find it for you. If you find it before me, just let me know. It's in Job 38, 12. Are we there? So Job chapter 38, verse 12. It says something very interesting. Let me start from verse 10. It says, uh, in fact, when I made the clouds, let me start, and the clouds, the garment, uh, when I made the clouds the garment of it, and thick darkness, a swaddling's band for it, and marked it my appointed boundary, and set bars and doors, and said, thus far shall you come, and no further. And here you shall, you sh shall your proud ways be stayed. Have you ever commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place? So let me ask you. God is asking, have you ever? Pentecostals took it as a challenge. So like challenge accepted. So now we decided to command when Jesus, God is asking a question, give him the microphone. And please, no laughing at people. Eh? Okay. So Backbench. Uh -huh. Basically, mine is not about commanding the morning, but that is the time that I find 
are very quiet now. We'll, we'll go there. Don't worry about quiet time when to yeah, pray. It's, we'll it's go okay. there at the end. Uh -huh. yeah. But now, okay, I'm looking at it this way. Because mm. I find it strange when, uh, you know, the disciples, one of the things that they asked Jesus to teach them mm. is how to pray. Mm -hmm. I don't see them asking them any other thing that he could teach them. Mm. I stand corrected, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yes. How to pray? Yes, he told them how to pray. A notice. I'm not done yet. Just a minute. Okay. Yeah. So in that, I also try to look at how Jesus used to do it. Mm -hmm. And most of the times I see him uh, going to solitary places, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And now, during the course of the day now, mm -hmm. that is now me now. I stand corrected again. Yes. Whenever even he was doing his miracles, mm -hmm. Jesus never used to pray, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yes. You're actually very correct. Yeah, he never used to pray. Mm. So my thinking again, because by the time Jesus, I mean, he had spent time with God, he had known what actually God wanted him to do the rest of the day. Yes. He had that power to just, you know, just speak a word and situations are okay. Because one thing I also noticed is that uh, the leper, I think, who was at the beautiful gate, mm. the one... I think who Peter uh, healed and told, or Peter said that uh, silver, silver and gold I do not have. Yeah, mm. I, Jesus used to pass there, mm. but I find it strange that Jesus never healed this guy. Mm. I stand corrected again if I read my Bible wrongly. Okay, now let's yeah. go through a number of things because you've touched on a number of things. First and foremost, prayer is without ceasing because it says pray without. It says this bo this book on, of the law you shall meditate upon day and. So prayer clearly is not a time. And when the disciples asked Jesus, how should we pray? He never gave them a time. <coughs> Matthew 6, he never gave them a time. But let us deal with what is wrong with how we pray and how we do deliverance. Then we will talk about what is right. Can, can we do that journey? So just bear with me. Let's just first uproot the wrong things. The wrong thing, there are two wrong things. Number one, you cannot pray because the enemy is most active. It does not make sense. Okay. If you have spiritual power and the enemy has spiritual power, who has greater power? Okay? So who should be panicking based on who? The devil should be panicking because I'm praying. I should not be panicking because the devil is doing something. Are we okay? All right? Second issue, that even Jesus himself, there are at least three days where he didn't withdraw to a solitary place to pray. When he was arrested, he didn't do that. See, we know that. Because he was in prison. Do you get you see, you can only form a doctrine out of something that was done absolutely. You understand? It says it was his habit. You understand? Now, a habit does not make a doctrine. So, listen, if someone writes a book about my prayer life, they will say that if Mark was in a meeting and there was a prayer, you've seen every time we are singing praise and worship, what do I do? I go to the back and I pace. You get now, it does not mean that everyone in master class should start pacing when they pray. Do you understand what I mean? It is the principle, never the practice. Am I making sense? It is the principle, not the practice. So Jesus taught the principle. When you pray, go to your closet and pray in private. Am I making sense? So that's a principle. Continue with the question. Okay. Um, number two. I have not only used the oil to pray. You remember, no laughing, huh? I have not only used the oil to pray for others as well. I have used water and salt to pray. You need to convince me how this is wrong, yet nimeona na... I pause. Pause. You, you don't go to the fun part. Go to the scriptures. 
go to the school. You know, Elam, you're so cheeky. But then please forgive him. He's special. Don't take it to heart. Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah, I think it's three something. Are we there? And it shall be that when you have multiplied and increased in the land in those days, says the Lord, they, will, they shall no more say, the ark of the covenant of the? It shall not come to mind. Nor shall they seriously remember it. Nor shall they miss or visit. Nor shall it be repaired or made again. For instead of the ark, which represented God's presence, he will show himself to be present throughout the? Now, you know, I tell you Christians read the Bible halfway. Some Christians brought an ark up a current. You remember that? Because they skipped this scripture. Can I tell you something? So you learn. So I help you. Just because God used the ark then does not mean he will use it now. Do you understand? Go to Kings. Is it Chronicles or Kings I sent you? I want to show you two examples real quick. Okay, Second Kings 18.4. He removed the high places, broke the images, cut down the Asherim, and broke in pieces what? The bronze serpent that Moses had. Who had made it? This is Second Kings. This is hundreds of years later. Okay? For until then, the Israelites had burnt incense to what? But he called it Nehushtan, a bronze trifle. Can I tell you what we like to do? You went to a prayer service. The man of God took some water and did receive. So, bronze snake. Did God use it? Yes. Was he faithful? Yes. Does it mean you still need to continue to use it? No. Because the moment the symbol becomes more important than he who it symbolizes, it's idol worship. Okay. Give you an example. If now we believe in oil or water or salt, okay? Imagine you get stranded on an island. Cindy, you and your family, you are stuck on an island. One of them falls sick. There is no oil. Will God heal them? So you always need to be careful not to fall into this trap. Do you understand? Just because God did something a certain way does not mean that when you have knowledge and revelation, you need to do it the same. This is why, listen, Moses had a rod. Sindio. God did impressive miracles by Moses' rod. Sindio. Did Joshua have a rod? Jesus, Jesus' miracles, have you ever noticed all of them were different? One stand up and walk. Another one he lifts up. Another one he makes clay. Another one he spoke to. Do you know why? Because he knew us. If he, he healed people the same way, I'm telling you we'd be doing it the same way till now. Do you understand? And this is our problem. It's the same thing with prayer times. One day you are praying at three in the afternoon. You have a vision. For the rest of your life, three in the afternoon, you're waiting for a vision. Do you get what we do? And it's, I'm not blaming you. It is our nature. We like routine. We like knowing that I've figured this 
out. That's what is called high places, by the way. One day I'll teach about high places. High places were places of worship. Because back then they believed, as they did believe obviously in Kenya back in the day, that if you go up a mountain, you're closer to? You understand? Now you understand why some people say they go to Catalonia. Because the belief comes from the point that if I go up a mountain, I'm closer to? So what have you just done? Unknowingly, you've confined God to a place. Unknowingly also, you've confined God to a time. It is called a high place. You understand? Let me tell you how God helped me. Me, I was used to, I was one of those people I used to tell my wife that Nikki pray at three. Naskianga God ka, yani nika yo Wi-Fi. Eh? Until for an entire month, that three o'clock was just me torturing myself. I couldn't hear a thing. And I asked God, have you abandoned? You know how you go through your sins? Did I do? Have I? Then he just told me, you know, if you'd please stop worshipping, time. So that now I've confined my God to operate between four and six in the morning. And then we go even further. We call it Read the Bible in one year. So you've confined God to ten. Is it ten chapters? Those of you who are being tortured, how many? How many chapters do you read? Three chapters a day, okay? Now let me ask you a question. Have you ever stopped to consider that sometimes you've read those chapters and had zero revelation? So what's the point? You know, let me tell you. We like doing things because they satisfy our sense of checkbox Christianity. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I've read my Bible, I've fasted. Those are all symbols. They're not the reality. I had to learn that I can read one verse. One. And I'm telling you the entire day that verse is being unpacked in my head. So I don't worship how short or long my Bible reading is. There are days I can finish entire books in one sitting. And I'm like, hey, this book makes sense. Then there are days I do two verses. Have I backslid? Do you understand what I mean? You cannot worship even how long you pray. Oh, let's be honest. I remember when I was a kid, we used to have prayer meetings. And then you're told, this one we are praying for the next 10 minutes. And I wonder, my God, 10 minutes, what will I tell God? <laughs> so minute one, and then you know what's the worst part? Let me tell you how silly we were. Eh? You are told we are praying for rain. Senior, 10 minutes. Okay. I want you to imagine God is your father. You've been told go ask him for water. And then your sister tells you 10 minutes. <laughs> Do you understand what I mean? So for 10 minutes, daddy give me water. Daddy give me water. <laughs> I don't know what, no, wait, wait. You need to do adoration, confession, uh, thanksgiving, supplication. So, oh God, I thank you because you are the giver of water. You are the one who created the rain. 
You are the one who causes it to rain. Lord, I bless you. Oh God, I confess I have not believed you as a bringer of rain. I confess, oh God, that I've walked in a desert in my life. Oh God, I thank you. I thank you, Abba Father. Because yes, all your promises are yes and amen. My God, I worship you. I thank you, my God. Shekana mama kandiriri. And now, oh God, we supplicate for our nation. There is drought in 47. That's just one minute. <laughs> So can you imagine if you're asking your father for something? Can you imagine if my son came to my bedroom in the morning? Oh, my father, you have a great goatee. What a wonderful goatee you have. I saw you on TV. How clever you are, my father. There is no other analyst like you. Father, I confess... I slapped my sister yesterday. Forgive me for my slapping. And now, oh Father, I ask, please give me breakfast. <laughs> See, that's your prayer life. Sasa, imagine that you lose school fees. So, so, what have we done? If you go to Matthew chapter 6, it says, don't be like the heathen, because they'll believe they'll be heard because of their much speaking. So we behave actually like pagans, because they don't have a father. That's why it says, for your father knows. When you speak like that, is that your father? You are still a pagan. <laughs> That's true. Do you understand? So, let me tell you how it works. I can spend six hours with my son on a Saturday. Cindy, because the mother and the daughter have gone, we've gone for a girl's night out. Okay? So they go. So I spend six hours with my son. Okay? Then there are days I woke up on TV, I slept on TV. Then I just hugged him and I told him I loved him. Is that, is the six hours more father than the one minute I had? So we cannot base our prayer life on time, its length, it's a relationship. Or which of you, when you're married, when your husband calls you, you start timing? Akinipigia 30 minutes, he loves me. See, that's how you do it with God. And then you are taught that don't be too busy for Jesus. I came in the morning, but you are too busy for me. So I came in at lunchtime and you were hurrying for another meeting. I came in the evening and you were. You remember that forward? When will you have time for? So now you need to make time for Jesus. So you make time at 6 in the morning. So Jesus in your life is for 6 till 6.15 because that's when you are actually praying. The rest you are torturing yourself. It is like being on a blind date. They bored you 15 minutes ago but you are still there being nice. You understand? You are just torturing yourself. Wait, how many people, Kwanzaa Kesha, oh my God, I hated those things. You, you go there at eight. Eh? I love, there's a very serious prayer warrior at the front. Today we are going to touch heaven. We are going to seek heaven. Then he's opening prayer, is 30 minutes. Oh, as if go macho. You get? Then we pay our prayer partner. Allah for the motivational speaking prayer. 
false prophecies. My brother, come and show you how false prophecies have worked. Okay? This is how pro- false prophecies come. See, tukwa tuwashika na mikono. Then Brother Mark is praying. So Brother Mark starts. Father, I thank you because you always bless. I thank you because this brother is going far. Father, I thank you because you are the God of promotion. And you spend an hour imagining good things. You are not a prophet. You are a motivational speaker. You are giving him hopes. No ever bless a kayangu. You're going far, my brother. You can see it. <laughs> you understand? That is not prophecy. That is motivational speaking. That's what your coach is supposed to say. You're the best. Yes. You're going to win. Yes. That's motivational. So we cannot continue in these practices and hope that God is going to move in our lives. We need to remove God from specific times. So, some of you get your best revelations in the toilet. No, it's a scientific fact, by the way. It's a, <laughs> it's a scientific fact. Number two, some of you can't pray in the bathroom because you think God is scared of your nakedness. The Bible says pray without ceasing. Do you know what that means? Be constantly connected to God. Constantly. You get? Constantly. So there is no time. Remove those high places from your life, please. Okay? So if you miss QT, so what? You know, let me tell you, it's like my wife divorcing me because when I left in the morning, I didn't kiss her. As in, surely. Can you imagine the marriage counselor? So, but that's how we treat God. Like, how's your work? Oh, you know, I've not been doing my QT. (sighs) We are not okay with God. (laughs) Yani, you think God is petty of how? You're not dating and you didn't meet yesterday. So, does that make sense? Cool. Elam, let's go to binding. Okay? That's the other thing we like. Today I'm just uprooting nonsense. Okay? So, because we, we started binding devils because it said, uh, whatever you bind on earth is also bound in? Okay. Some can know a binding wire. And you decide to bind the devil. Are we there, Elam? Binding. Whatever you bind, it's in my view. Hmm? Yeah? yeah, it's there. Yeah. Okay. But just before you finish, you're sure you don't want to hear the other part of that question? Uh, we, uh, because time. you know this. You know, this people okay, finish, need finish, help. People finish. need help. Eh? Finish. And these are genuine things. Okay, finish. Yeah, and everyone has promised not to laugh anyway. I have finished. So, <clears throat> part two of question two. I will give you his name, two. his number, his address. Don't worry. So, uh-huh. this is part two of question two. Mm. Yeah. You need to convince me mm. how this is wrong. Yet, Nimeona, Nasiku Ambiwa, God came through and worked in marvelous ways. Kwanza, sometime back during those night prayer moments, a witch did not find peace in our estate. Yeye pia alikuwa busy your time going to gates chanting. Well, <laughs> remember sio kuambiwa. Ah, yeah. Now pause. That's actually a very good story. Um, and you know you've had, let me, now let's put the stories together. There are those who've dreamt that a, a spirit has come to sleep with you. So, wait, so you incubus succubi. You know how people are acting here like they've not been Christians. Eh? Those things have been taught. Spirit, husband, spirit. And children. Kwa kuna children. Your doctrine may upgrade you. Eh? No, I left. It was just succubi and incubi. So the child is called by 
by product. <laughs> so, I'll answer that, those questions eh? about, you know, how I saw, I had a witch on my roof, it was scratching, or I, uh, I in fact, this is, was it? No, I, I don't think she's here. Um, someone sent me a question, and they said, I'm praying for someone. And they say that every night since they got born again, a spirit comes and sits in their bedroom. Can I tell you what I told them to tell? I said, next time the spirit comes, offer it tea. <laughs> now you see, anyway, I need to teach you that the last thing, the weakest demon, is the one who does such things. Yani that's, let me tell you, Akikuja offer him tea. Say, so Unataka, how many sugars? Because the only intention is cause to cause you to fear, by the way. That's the only intention. And the more you fear and you start fighting in the spirit, the more they come every day. <coughs> Truly, I tell you, whatever you forbid, notice the term here is. I took it from the Amplified because in your version, depending on what you use, it says bind. So I'm defining for you what bind means. So, because we need to understand all this in context. Okay? Truly I tell you, whatever you forbid and declare to be improper and unlawful, improper and on earth must be what is already forbidden in where was it forbidden first? And whatever you permit and declare proper and lawful on earth must be what is permitted in? So, is there any binding there? Do you understand what binding is now? To declare illegal and unlawful? Do you understand? So, it is a legal term. Okay? Okay? Now, is it a legal term? Because it says, again, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth, harmonize together and make a symphony together about whatever anything and everything they may ask, it will come to pass to be done for them by my Father in, for wherever, for wherever two or three are gathered, drawn together as my followers, in and into my name, there I am in the midst of them. So you cannot separate this scripture. Because it is one. I know you've been taught separately. So let's put it together. There is a body called parliament in Kenya. Whenever they gather in the name of the people, it is assumed the people of Kenya have gathered, correct? And whatever they declare illegal is what is illegal in Kenya, correct? Whatever they declare to be okay is what is lawful in? Now, I need you to understand because in your understanding, Parliament is given authority by the people. That's why I said they've gathered in the name of the. But in the kingdom of heaven, he said, all power and authority is given unto me. Now go into all the nations making disciples. So when we gather, we don't gather under the power we've been sent by the people. No, we gather as those who's been sent by Christ. So, and when we gather, we constitute his ecclesia. Remember that teaching, accurate ecclesia? So as we gather as is his ecclesia, ecclesia is the word for parliament. Do you get it? So when we gather in his name, we are legally constituted as a parliament. Do you get it? And whatsoever we declare illegal is what we've seen has been declared illegal in heaven. 
sound. So it is not about an angel running at your command to bind a demon. Because that's what we've been taught. <laughs> so, if you read this, what is spiritual warfare? Because clearly, in this respect, it is not praying in the dark of night to close the works of witches. It is to declare illegal. That means you cannot do spiritual warfare unless you know the law of heaven. And that's where the problem is. So many Christians don't know the law. Okay? Does this make sense? Any questions so far? Yes, Rita, not Tinina. I am. Answer, ask your question as I remove my jacket. Ndosikaika, my brother. You have taste, my man. You have taste. I know it's okay. I got this. No, I got this. I got this. What are you saying? I have a few questions. Just ask a few because, no, as in ask shortly because I need to, there's so much ground to cover. Meanwhile, take me to Daniel. Oh, no, wait, take me to Revelation. Take me to Revelation, that's shorter. Do demons exist? Demons, yes. Yes. I'll, I'll show, yes, they do. Higher. Second question, can someone see them with their naked eye or spiritual eye, as you say? Yeah, with your spiritual eye, yes, but... Your point to me? Because you said about the binding. It's just a question. It just came to me. Okay. Yes. Now, you see, because I have to define, and that's why I'd prefer you ask later. Mm -hmm. Because you see, right now I've defined for you that binding mm -hmm. is not to take a demon <laughs> and funga funga them mm -hmm. with kamba, as we've imagined. Mm -hmm. It is to declare illegal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. which is a legal term. Mm -hmm. So can we stay there and then I do this other part? Okay? I've seen your question, so just give me time. So, now, then I had a strong and loud voice in saying, now it has come the salvation and the power and the kingdom and the dominion and reign of our and the power, the sovereignty and the authority of his Christ, the Messiah. For the accuser of our brethren, who keeps bringing before God before our God charges against? Okay. So what does Satan do? He brings at you? So is he stealing your money? He says he brings? Where do you bring accusations? Before a judge, correct? Sindio? So again, this is a legal? It's a legal term. Guys, are we okay? Against them day and night has been cast out. And they overcame, conquered him, by means of the blood of the Lamb and by the utterance of their testimony. Sindio? And that's where we finish. When you're praying, you say, they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. So what is the word of your, your testimony? Banasi vio ndugu, tangu kwepo wiki lio pita, munga meniweka, bado ni miokoka. See, that's the word of your testimony. That is repetition. No, it's just repeating yourself. We heard you the first time. So, it says, For they did not love and cling to life, even when faced with death, holding their lives cheap till they had to die, for their witnessing. That is what it means to overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. <laughs> so
So can we stop covering roads with blood now? Have you read it correctly? When it says four, what does it mean? This is the proof of the blood and the testimony. That you do not hold your life dear. Let me explain this to you. When the devil accuses you, the number one accusation is self-worship, self-preservation. Can I prove it to you? Three quarters of your prayer is about how much money you have. Self-preservation. Three quarters of your fears are you being broke one day. Have I lied? What was Job's, the devil's accusation to Job? He serves you because you've protected him and you've prospered him. If you take away his prosperity, he will curse you. So what happens in your life when the devil takes away your money? Don't you confirm the accusation? Oh God, who happy? Oh guys, can I teach? So is he really attacking your money or your faith in God? Because I want you to see what spiritual warfare is. Spiritual warfare is not the fight to keep stuff. Because that's what your prayer is. Oh, Father, I protect my family. I protect my money. I protect her from the enemy. I... So that's what we do. We try to keep our stuff away from Satan. Well, the truth is, what the only thing we are supposed to be holding on to is Christ. Okay? That he, you see, you need to get to the point where the devil can take your life and you're still holding on to Christ. That's what needs to happen. That you can come for everything. But I will not cast my God. But you know, nowadays it's commonplace to say exactly the opposite of what Job said. Sujumunga ko happy. Munga menia? You're already falling into the accusation. So can I explain to you how it works? It's very simple. The devil is not interested in your stuff. He does not have a store in hell. Just tell you for free. You've got an overinflated ego of your stuff. If it was someone's stuff he was coming for, it would be Bill Gates's, not yours. Oh, si Between you, if listen, if the devil has a pick of things to pick from in the world, Africans will be the most peaceful. There's nothing to take here. Anga koko Sweden, Los Angeles. So stop having an overinflated ego of self. You're the only one who thinks your things are important. So what is the accusation? The accusation is always the same. Satan goes to God. And God asks him, Umekuwa happy? Nimekuwa po master class? Nikizuru? Nikibanga is. Marao. Umecheki jo. Akasema, eh, nimecheki jo, alingia around. <laughs> okay? Okay? Umemwana, eh. Umemwana vila nani worship squeeze? Eh, hey, nimecheki. Lakini ana worship kwa sababu, akona do, akona nini, 
Subaru. <laughs> okay? Now, this is what actually God said. I believe in Job so much and his love for me that even if you take away his stuff, he still love me. That's what God said. So, what is spiritual warfare? Spiritual warfare is this. The devil comes and makes an accusation against you. Now, because most of us body to money stage, he makes an accusation about you concerning money. And he says, by the way, this chick, this dude, only praises you when they have money. In fact, this joy of the Lord that is their strength, it is this money brings me joy and I am strong. So if you touch his money, he will surely curse you. And in fact, he says, curse you. The wife said, why don't you curse God and die? Munga meniacha tu acha tu nasikia tu kudai. Do you understand? That is the accusation. So what is spiritual warfare? Spiritual warfare is being able to understand what is your legal position. Sindio? So what is your legal position? Though you slay me, yet I will praise you. Do you understand? Though you ruin me, I will still worship you. That is the legal position. So you declare that nonsense of crying illegal. Oh my. Do you understand it? Stop binding the devil. Hey, Mazim, make her too depressed. <laughs> Am I making sense? So where is the biggest battle? It is in what you're convinced is the truth. Are you convinced God loves you? Are you convinced God will provide for you? Are you convinced that no matter what he's got you? Are you convinced of that fact to the point of death? That no matter what, I am sure, I know who I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him against that day. Whatever day it may be. Do you understand spiritual warfare? Problem with Pentecostal Christians is when money disappears, we start casting out the devil. Bring out my money. I call it from the north the south, the east, and the west. And under the waters. Because you imagine that the devil has power to keep your blessing from you, correct? This is where the problem is. Now let me tell you something. Blessing is not your account balance, nor where you stay. Can I tell you what it is to be blessed? To be blessed is to come into that place where there is drought, rain, tsunami, hurricane. You're just the same. That's what it is to be blessed. You understand? Let me tell you, I had a conversation the other day. And people were talking about money. And, and we were shown this picture, man. This guy has built a house. He has a shooting range in his house, a bowling alley. In Kenya, Upper wow. two valley a kid, the valley a kid. You understand? Not to see valley. Okay, somewhere. All right? Then, he has a lift, a lift to his bedroom on the third floor. A lift. Okay? Yes. Just wait. Just wait. And in his shower, 
He's created a place where he can sun dry himself. <laughs> Do you understand? <laughs> now, in this conversation, now we see why you So, these guys, everyone is talking and they're like, I want that life. I desire that life. And my statement was, I've made peace with poverty. <laughs> that was g- genuine. And I was not saying it to show how Christian I am. It is something I'm actually genuine about. I, I, I'm fine. You understand? You, you, it, has not, it is no longer a pursuit of my life. Do you know why? Because if you read Timothy 6, it says, but for you, man of God, do not desire to be wealthy. Let me tell you, if I desire to be wealthy, the amount of money I'll get from your pockets telling you to tap into this anointing. I can't do that. The gospel cannot mix with the desire for wealth. So if God makes me rich, that is his problem. Me, My issue is my provision. Now see, I eat, I sleep. Now in that big house, does he sleep in the lift? Analalanga kwa kitanda? So, and if you feel like you've missed a lift, go to the nearest mall. Panda shook as many times as you want. Do you understand? It's <laughs> savage. No, seriously. No, I'm not hating on him. I'm happy for him. But I'm just saying it does not affect the quantity of happiness in my. You get. You see, I may live in the smallest house in Karen, but I don't drive around looking at the bigger ones, wishing it they were mine. Do you understand what I mean? Because what happens? The devil leverages accusations against you. Saying you will lose your faith in God if he can touch X, Y, or Z. Now, the funniest thing is the moment you fail that test, say my repeat. Repeat. Because listen, the devil has scarce resources. So if you show him your foolishness, repeat. He doesn't have time. He's not omnipresent. So if he knows your problem is every time he touches your money, you have a problem. So what does he do? He lets you seem like you're seeking God, prospering, touch your money, backslide, (laughs) come back. So this has been your life. Because you refuse to what? Come to the place where you're willing to die. You get to the point where you're like, you know what? You want all my money? Can I tell you the prayer I make every day nowadays? I say, Lord, I surrender everything to you. And yes, it scares me sometimes. But I get, I'm getting to that point where I'm like, you know what? Kwani watu korogosho shiwanaishi. Am I too special for Kibera? I'm not. So God, though you slay me, it's fine. You understand? So for me to live, it is Christ. What does that mean? Only what Christ gives me is what I'm bothered with. Even if you buy a Range Rover, I'll not come ask you for tithe. Do you understand? Because I'm not looking at Deno's paycheck. Nimulize, uko kwenye uko nalipongo how much? I love must class umepeana. Do you understand? Because those are called accusations. Do you understand? So are you seeing what spiritual warfare is? Okay? Are you seeing? So here it has nothing to do with coconuts. They overcame him because they threw away coconuts. Didn't go to the sea. What are the other things you don't do because your grandmother told you? 
You don't go to your neighbors because they throw diseases at you. That's not how you overcome. Do you know how you overcome the enemy? Be, keep on believing what God told you. That's how you overcome the enemy. Am I making sense? I'm going very slowly and giving very detailed examples. It's not because I'm talking about you. It's because I want you to understand the devil can no longer hold you in a prison called fear. Because it's when truth comes, it's supposed to set you free. Do you understand? It's not supposed to keep you in bondage. I want to read a scripture, even as Elam finds it. I want to read um, Ephesians chapter 6 before I go to Daniel. Because Ephesians chapter 6 is the other one you like to say. Put on the full of God and do what? Okay. Listen. In conclusion, he says, be strong in the Lord, empowered through your union with him. Draw your strength from him. Okay? Draw what? Your strength from where? From him. Put on God's whole armor, the armor of a heavily armed soldier, which God supplies, that you may be able to successfully do what? Stand. Not throw fire at the devil. Not to declare and decree, but to? That's why it says resist the devil and he will flee from? So this is teaching you how to stand. Not we are marching on. It is to? So how do you stand? Okay? To stand up against, in fact, I like what the Amplifier says, all the strategies and the deceits of the devil. So what does it say? For you are not wrestling with flesh and blood, contending only with physical opponents. So does that tell you? That spiritual warfare can never be about anything physical. Can I set you free first? You see, if you come to my house, I have four, not one, four African masks. Okay? Some of you are told the demons will come to my house. I can assure you they are zero. Or do we look demon possessed? Can I, let, me, let me prove to you. Let me, can I tell you how you know? If I have darkness and you have light, how is darkness standing? You see, it can't work. We need to understand these things are very simple. You see? You see, let me tell you, if you know Christ, there can be no... Anyway. So it can't be physical, okay? But what does it say? But against despotisms. Do you know what despot is? A despot is a dictator. Okay? Against powers. And against the master spirits who are the world rulers of this present darkness. Have you noticed all of the above three terms are terms of government? Have you noticed that? Despots, I give you power, the instruments of power. Okay? And wicked rulers, spirits, master spirits of, uh, that who are the world rulers of this present darkness and against spirit forces of wickedness. What are spirit forces, armed forces? Get it? He just described government. He just described for you how the devil rules. And then he tells you where the devil rules from. He says, in the heavenly places. So let me ask you a question. What is this thing you've been fighting with a cat that is next door? Because the war is where? So what is it with cats? If a witch is flying on a broom, so what? Now think about it, so what? 
In fact, for me, I'd like to take a picture. Please come. <laughs> I'll land up IV. Me, I'm taking selfies. You can you fly? Me, I'll take selfies. Do you know why? Because that is utter nonsense. So what? No, seriously, so what? If he gets on a broom, but isn't that exactly what the devil wants? All these stories, by the way, are created to give you fear for the devil. So that now you spend your entire life basing your life out of the fear you have for the devil. That's the entire plan. That's why me, I'll take selfies, because I'm not afraid. <laughs> People listening to me on Facebook are in trouble today. Okay? So it says, therefore, how, this is how you fight in the spiritual realm. Okay? It says, therefore, put on God's complete armor that you may be able to resist and stand your ground on the evil day. Resist and do what? Where did we get throwing fire? Decree, decreeing and declaring, binding and losing. Kanyaga. Fagia shetaki. Okay? In the evil day of danger. And having done all that the crisis demands. That means when you are in crisis, there are certain demands you must do. And I'll tell you which ones. To stand, again, where? Family in your place. How many times does Paul say stand? How many times does he say it stand? What does that tell you? That if you began the crisis and God had told you, my daughter, I will prosper you. What do you do? You stand. And tomorrow the landlord kicks you out and you stand on that word that says what? I will prosper. And your husband leaves you and you stand on that word that says what? Are you, do you get it? The issue is standing. Oh, my brothers and sisters. Are we okay? You know, I wish I could take my faith and literally inject it into your heart. Me now, I'm here. Let me tell you the truth. I shall begin to say, touch not the Lord's anointed. <laughs> uh, those of you at master class, you know the joke. Eh? It is not serious. You can touch me as many times as you want. Because we... <laughs> Let me... Let me, let me tell you something. To the pure, all things are pure. <laughs> so, let me finish. Stand. Again, it says what? Stand. Therefore, hold your ground. Having tightened the belt of... So what's the belt of truth? The word of God, Right? If my word abides in you and you, are, and you abide in my word, you shall know the truth, just set you free. So truth is a substance, the, truth is a substance of the word, right? Around your loins and having put on the breastplate of integrity, moral rectitude, and right standing with God. Righteousness, right? How do you get righteousness? By believing upon the word. So Jesus is the word. When we believe upon the word, we are considered, okay, continue, and having shod your feet, no, have I skipped? All right, and having sh shod your feet in preparation to face the enemy with the firm-footed stability, promptness and readiness produced by the good news of peace. So what do your feet have? Again, the word. Do you get it? Okay? Lift up over all the covering shield of saving faith. 
upon which you can quench all the flaming missiles of the wicked ones. So what does that tell you? That how you put all this together, how you cov cover everything together, is you got to have faith. How does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of? So the truth, the righteousness, the shoes come from where? The word. Are you seeing this? And take the helmet of? How did you get saved? You believed upon the word that was spoken to you. And the sword of the? What is the sword of the spirit? The word of God. And the sword of, and let, let me read this in this version. And the sword that the spirit wields. Who wields the sword? Who wields the sword? You or the spirit? Which is the word of? So what does that tell you? That the entire armor, how you stand against the enemy, is you've got to know what is in the law. Otherwise you cannot declare what is illegal. Can I teach? You cannot declare what is illegal if you don't know what is in the... So, can we stop wishful prayers? You just bind because you decided you need money. You need to know what is actually in the... Does that make sense, guys? Now, I need to deal with one more thing, the book of Daniel. Because this is where you've been taught to fast and pray all the days of your life. The book of Daniel, chapter 9, I think it is. Are we there? No, it starts at 9, Alam. Oh, yeah, it's 10. Then, all right. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning for three whole. What was he doing? Morning. Was he fasting? Is morning fasting? Okay, good. I ate no pleasant or desirable food. So was he fasting? Okay. Nor did I, nor did any meat or wine come into my. I did not, and I did not anoint myself at all for the full three. So he was not fasting. I caught him a parara, na kula ugali skuma. So can we agree? So the next time your Kuriakos pastor tells you Daniel fast, tell him no problem. I don't like pizza and may talk about that. So that's what Daniel did. Uh, okay. On the 24th day of the first month, I was, I was on the bank of the river, great river Heidekal, which is a Tigris. I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a man clothed in linen whose loins were guarded up with pure gold of Ufas. Okay? And the angel said to me, O Daniel, you greatly beloved man, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright. For to you I am now sent. Okay? And while he was saying this word to me, I stood up trembling. Then he said to me, Fear not, Daniel, for from when? So the first was irrelevant. Because you're waiting for an answer. If from the first day the answer has been sent, what are you fasting for? Sindio? Okay. Your heart, now, what is the, let's define the problem that you set your and the heart to? So what was the answer brought to do? To help him? So clearly, it was not a Volkswagen being brought to him. The angel was bringing understanding. So already I'm beginning to tell you what was the spiritual warfare. Listen, if Daniel is supposed to understand, what is the devil trying to stop him from doing? 
So do you get spiritual warfare? Okay, let's continue. And to humble yourself before your God. Your words were heard and I have come as a consequence and in response to your but the prince of the kingdom of withstood me for 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief celestial princes, came to help me, for I remained there with the kings of... Okay, continue. So what has been held away from Daniel for 21 days? Understanding, correct? What has kept him from understanding? The principality of Apasia, correct? So what is it? Now I've come to do what? To make you understand. What is, what is to befall your people in the latter? For the vision is for many days yet to come. Then you had spoken to me according to this word. I turned my face toward the ground and was dumb. And behold, one in the likeness of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spoke. And he said to me, who stood before me, O oh my Lord, by reason of the vision, sorrows and pains have come upon me, and I retain no strength. For how can my Lord's servant, who is feeble, talk with this, my Lord? For now no strength remains in me, nor is there any breath in left in me. Then there... Then there touched me, and again one, whose appearance was like that of a man. And he strengthened me. Continue. So, listen. Who are we dealing with so far? Daniel. Who's being strengthened? So that he can do what? Keep those things in your mind. Eh? And he said, O oh man greatly beloved, Fear not, peace be to you. Be strong, yes, be strong. And when he had spoken to me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak, for you have strengthened me. When he said, do you know why I have come to you? And now I will return to flight the hostile prince of Persia. The who? See, I thought Michael had dealt with him. You know, you need to read the Bible in English. I was retained because of the prince of? Okay. Then Michael came to? But when I go back, who will I meet? Explain. A hundred marks. This is the entire exam. Explain. Now I just want you to Explain. Eh? Just looking at the meaning. Okay? So, there, to re now I will return to fight with the hostile prince of? And when I have gone, behold, the hostile prince of Greece will? So what's the point? This prince of Persia is being fought. This guy comes out, tells Daniel how Michael came to his aid, correct? And then, when he goes back, Michael is still not done. Michael is still fighting, and this guy will join him again, correct? But even after that fight, the prince of Greece will so why are you fighting? This is the problem of reading the Bible, Nusu Nusu. Because when you read it correctly, you are like, wait, I have no idea what is going on here. Or who has, who knows what is going on? Ilam, please tell us what's going on. Okay, now. No, see, he said... Okay. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. I'm very serious. So this is what's happening. Mm. There's something there about, I mean, the previous verses were we f fight against principalities. Those are things in the mind. Eh? So this is not happening to Daniel directly. Mm. 
this is what happens on our behalf. Like, there is a battle going on somewhere there. So when he received the understanding and life seemed to be going on, there's something else that would come again to clog his mind, which is now the other prince from Greece, something, something. This and it's constantly going on like that. But he's not like physically doing this. These are things that happen on our behalf as children of God, something like okay. that. Okay. Please clap for Ella. I take him pesa. <laughs> My line is open. Now, let me explain. Okay? The Bible puts it like this. It says, offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Holy? And pleasing. Okay? For this is your spiritual act of conform no longer to the patterns of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your then you will be able to tell what is God's pleasing and perfect will for you in your life. So that's why it says. So it means if I'm not, I've not offered my body as a living sacrifice and I still have the patterns of the world in my head, I cannot tell the will of God. Correct? That's exactly what's going on here. Daniel is being told that a message was sent to you. But because you now think like a Persian, where was he? He had been a slave in Persia how many years? 70 plus years now. Okay? So because you think like a Persian, patterns of the world, this message could not get through to you. Because already on the first day, if you are not in Persia, in your head, you'd have gotten it. But because you can't get it, we've come to strengthen your mind. You get. So he is strengthened so that he can understand. You get it. Do you understand? So the prince of Persia is being replaced by the prince of what happened? It was the Greeks. No, it was the Babylonians, then the Persians, then the Greek. So what is, what is it saying? That the Persian mentality will give way to the Greek mentality. And you will still need to overcome that mentality. Okay. Rewind selector. Let's use another scripture. We use another root. Okay? It says, against rulers of this present age of darkness. Correct? Now, let me teach you present age of darkness. Rulership. When I tell you that sons don't work to eat, but they inherit the principality of the world in your head tells you that does not make sense. So when the word comes to you from the first day, you will be mourning for 21 days because you don't understand how you will eat and you've not worked the entire month. Correct? So what needs to happen to you you need to be strengthened in your what? Faith. So that you'll be able to understand that God will provide for me because he loves me. That's exactly what's going on here. Do you get it? A lot of the time, we cannot accept the word of God because school has taught us different. Cindy, what did school teach you? Short term, mid term, long term. Sindio, uh, I am pretty sure at least half of us have done those plans. Sindio, mm -hmm. how many of your short term, mid term plans, long term plans came out exactly as you expected? <laughs> Can I tell you something? Here's the funniest thing. 
I like watching a guy called John Oliver. You know John Oliver? He's a comedian. Now, he did a study on financial advisors and how they pick stock. Okay? And actually, he didn't do the study. He was just reporting on it. And they took a cut. A cut. That randomly where it was stepping, it picked stocks. And they put professional stock pickers to pick stocks and see who at the end of a certain period will have made profit. Guess who made the most profit? The cut. You understand? The world <laughs> the world has convinced you okay that its systems work. Correct? Yet that world you believe in is in crisis all the but this democracy we believe in okay has brought us Donald Trump. Do you understand? But because that is what you've been trained to, when I tell you God does not work with or move in democracy, the spirit of this age has taught you to say, no, that is not true. Jesus, please tell me, between Raila and Uhuru, who have you chosen? You understand? That is what is called the spirit of the age. That is the principality. Okay, so I describe to you various principalities so you understand. If you go to Eastlands, people drive like mad people, right? You go to Westlands and they're a bit more civilized. Then we conclude there are more demons on that side. No, I've actually talked with people who say there are more demons in Eastlands. Okay? Now, pause. At the same time, there are more heroin and cocaine dens in Westlands than there are in Eastlands. And brothels. Okay? So let me explain to you. Human organizations that were instituted by men, by and large, are ruled by the philosophies of demons. Okay? Now let me teach you a secret. You become what you worship. Correct? So let me explain to you. It's very simple. Tribes don't have characteristics. The gods of those tribes have characteristics. Do you understand? So this is how it works. In Eastlands, okay, what do they worship? It's very easy to tell what they worship. The music that is liked most there is dancehall. <laughs> no, just because you live there, you could be the exception. But how many clubs there play dancehall? Show of hands. Many, right? Yes. Now, I'm not saying that they worship reggae. But I want you to see the content of that reggae music. The content of that dancehall music. What does it espouse? Number one, it espouses being a hustler for Jaja. You understand? That's what they worship. People in Eastlands worship the hustle lifestyle. And they worship Mta. Correct? So what do they become? Like that. You get People in Westlands like watching Kim Kardashian. So they become slay queens. <laughs> you know, there are ladies on Instagram, if I met them in real life, they have to turn around. Because I've never seen them a front picture. Every picture is... I follow everyone. <laughs> Let me tell you. In my former life, I followed everyone. So, 
here's the thing. Because of what they worship, they become like that. And in fact, the devil is so nice, he will give you but augmentation things so you can become more like Kim Kardashian. If you worship Huda, there are chemicals sold in pharmacies you can inject and be like Huda, correct? You become like what you? So what is a principality? It is a mentality we've all accepted to be true. So there is no particular demon of corruption possessing every Kenyan, no. It is a series of beliefs we have believed that caused that. Now, the issue is not corruption. The issue is Kenyans worship money. Can I speak the truth? We worship money so much that if today Chris Kirubi came, I am supposed to sit down and give him my microphone to speak to you, correct? So that's what they do in churches. Simply because he has... So what do you really worship? Do you get it? So because of our national worship for cash, we produce corruption. Do you get? So the principality, all he does is make sure that you follow the rules and regulations of his worship. The devil does not have enough demons to occupy every Kenyan. But for as long as you believe the wrong thing, you will always produce corruption. You get? That's why Jesus says, if you know the truth, it shall set you free. So if I know the truth, that money cannot save me, and I begin to live in Christ, then corruption has no power. But because of my belief in doing things myself and in my power, when I come and tell you you no longer need to bribe, your principality tells you what? Did you understand spiritual warfare now? So it is not an issue of binding. It is an issue of changing your Okay? Now, I've dealt with powers, principalities, and all those things. Now you understand them correctly, okay? Because that's how they work. So there's no big fat demon sitting over Kenya. But there's a big fat ideology sitting in our minds. Now, let's deal with the lowest class of demons, spiritual forces in the heavenly realm. Okay? Those are the ones which are sent to shake your bed. Okay? Ostensibly, ostensibly to scare you. By the way, that's the entire purpose. Okay? Now I want you to notice something very interesting. Have you noticed how the disciples used to cast out demons? At some point, their shadows used to do it. Do you know why? Christ had died and he'd resurrected. And he'd made a public display of the works of the enemy. Correct? So, the smallest demons, the ones that shake your bed, scratch your roof, those ones. How do you deal with them? Let me teach you the principle. You need to be so busy doing God's work, your shadow gets a job. Do you get it? Let me explain to you. That is a sequel. Let me explain to you. If, if demons are darkness, correct? and you carry the light, how long does it take the light to chase away the darkness? How long? It's instant, right? So does that tell you? Deliverance is very easy. Once you know who you are, 
and you're busy doing God's work. You carry? I'm telling you, you show up, they just leave. I don't bother. Me, let me tell you, I've cast out demons from 11 to 3. I know the process and the pain. And you pour anointing oil. You know, there was a time we even used to carry a big Bible so you can place it on their chest. Because you place the word of God. So I've done these things. <laughs> I've done these things, okay? But let me tell you, this is the last time and this is how God dealt with, with, with me and deliverance. So I've gone to preach in a certain Kuriakos. And then because they believe in coming to the front, because the altar is here, it can't be there, I don't know why. But because the altar is here, where I'm preaching from, they came. All right? Then some lady begins to manifest. That's what they call it. All right? So I'm like, ah, I remember the good old days. I shall shakarande kamama. This thing. You know how you know how you go into deep tongues. Eh? I'm telling you, the lady, I told, her, I told them, bring her. I shook her hand. The thing left. I was so mad at God. I was like, this is, you know, in Kenya, if you want to show you are a powerful preacher, you take a koti, eh? and you say, fire. So it puzzled me for a while. And I was like, what happened? Then I began to realize that if I know the law and I know it is illegal for him to be seated where he is seated, how long does it take me to remove him? It depends on how much I believe as a person. So I stopped struggling. Kabitha, I realized, wait, he died, made a public spectacle of you, Removed all your power, took the keys from him. What am I struggling for? You understand? So, there is a preacher who is told you know, someone brings their son to church and they say, Our son is possessed. We need you to pray for him. I said, Just Relax. You sit in the service. He did his thing. And he said, okay, let's go for a car ride. Let's see if this demon can sit in a car with me. You see, demons only have power to the extent you are afraid of them. You understand? And the more attention you give them, the more they stay. So, a demon visits your home. Shaking chairs. You want lunch? Karibu. It is not a sin. Eh? So you are supposed to welcome visitors. <laughs> you know, let me tell you, the religion, you, you understand that thing where I tell you, you have a stronghold in your mind that even when I say this, you, you can't imagine. <laughs> let me tell you, eh? There's a preacher who woke up. I need, I need to, yani, please pray God gives us money. Because I need to take you to certain preachers who don't live in this country. And you see the things they do. So this guy, it's the middle of the night. He hears his bed shaking and stuff like that. He opens his eyes and he sees the devil himself. He says, oh, it's you, okay. You, shakana mama. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Quick question, okay? A demon has showed up physically. First thing, can he do anything God has not allowed him to do? Okay, if God has allowed him to do it, can you stop him? So why are you bothered? No, I'm just asking a question. Pause. There is no force in hell that can do anything unless God has allowed it, correct? And if God has allowed it, can you stop it? So why are you bothering? 
Remember, who wields the sword? Listen, can I tell you how to deal with all these petty demons bugging your life? Ignore. What they want is your attention. You see, it's a very simple military tactic. Okay? Our base is in Nairobi. You are coming to attack us. What we will do? We will tell you our base is in Mombasa and send a few soldiers there. So you keep fighting the ones in Mombasa. When you finish three, we send four. You, you think you're winning the war. Is it to Konairo? It's exactly what the devil does. Do you get it? So you, you think you've had victory. Can I explain it to you? Let me tell you how it happens. Because it took me a while to understand. You go, wow, I'm so over time. Give me five minutes. You go to a church where they do deliverance. And I'm sure you've watched them on TV, correct? Sunday number one. Toka, zunguruka, zunguruka, sumbuka, sumbuka. Okay? Sunday one. Sindio? Same congregation. Next Sunday. Toka, sumbuka, zunguruka, tabika, tabika, enda kuzimu, enda kuzimu. Sunday two. Sindio? Sunday three, same thing. Let me ask you a question. What is going on? Listen, if I came to master class and taught you the same thing, something would be wrong, isn't it? Because either I'm a broken record or you can't understand, correct? So why is it that you're casting out demons from the same congregation every Sunday? First, how did the demons get in? Let's just ask, How? And then you preached the word, they were just there. Let, let, let's just ask yourself a question. See, you're preaching there? And then the demon sat there throughout your word. <laughs> throughout. Akingoja after. Alafu, when you did an altar call, the demon told this person to come in front. I just want you to think. Tell the person to come in front so that you could interrogate the demon. Are you people serious? Do you get it? So, it's a very simple thing. The devil knows you're wasting your... So you want a show? He'll give you a show every Sunday. No problem. Because now when you get fired, I have a demon. You zunguruka, you get dirty... You show us things we shouldn't see. <laughs> no, because that's what ushers do. They just have sheets to cover unmentionables. <laughs> Senior, you get dirty, okay? You're still unemployed? Still in trouble? Nothing has changed. Now your auntie dies. <laughs> Again. You honestly think, let me ask you, you honestly think a father who loves you wants you to be rotating like that? Look at Jesus. Every time a demon tried to get attention, he rebuked it sharply and told you to come out. Every time. In fact, when he saw a crowd coming, he removed it even quicker. Because, listen, if my brother has a demon, do I want to embarrass him rolling on the ground? If I have the power to remove it, so to it raka. Number two, if we are teaching the word, how? Guys, we need to raise our standard of understanding and faith. God does not desire for you to roll on the ground. No. You are a king and a priest. So when you go to deliver Uhuru, what will you do? Can you imagine Uhuru on the ground? <laughs> so you can't imagine Uhuru there and you imagine yourself there? Surely. 
You see, it seems ridiculous when I say Uhuru, right? And yet we as Christians spend 15 minutes of a Christian show rolling on the ground. No, let me tell you, it's very easy. Come out. It's done. Do you understand? It's done. Please have that faith. Amen? Amen. Last question. I've seen your hand. Let me answer the question about angels. Why has, haven't angels seen God? It's very simple. He dwells in an approachable light. Are we okay? The Father dwells in an inapproachable light. And basically, he is so dazzling you can't see him. But you can perceive him because Isaiah says, I see the Lord. How do we see him? He says, come and buy from me without money. All right? And buy eye ointment so that you may be able to see. That's one of the prayers that you guys need to do, by the way. A lot of guys are blind. You can hear this thing, but you can't see where to go. You need to pray for God to open your machos so we can perceive him because he's our father. Sir? Cool? Two questions, then we go because it's now 8.30. Oh, by the way, this is master class. We are all adults. If you are running late, door is open. No one will feel bad. Okay? No judgment. Okay? So don't let us inconvenience you because you want to impress us with your ability to sit on a chair when you're uncomfortable. Can I say something, Abo? Let me tell you, eh? So I help everyone. Imagine, I'm one of those people who, if I rebuke you, one, I'm not angry, okay? But I know how to rebuke nicely, and you'll feel like I'm so angry. But I'm not angry. I'm just accurate in my rebuke, okay? And then, and then after that, immediately, by the way, we are fine. By the way, just to know. So I saw people who were quiet in the group for three days. No, 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 no. Betty, can I say the story? Betty was just being cheeky. You understand? And she forgot I know her. So I've had meetings the whole day. First, I'm mad at all these people who let Betty go on and on for six hours. Because I, I wish I could have inboxed the older generation here. That was one. And then B Betty was just being cheeky. Because she knows. She knows that you can't go around kissing people. You understand? Because we all know that it is not the act of kissing that is a sin. It is the thought. It is, you see, it, it, it does not matter how far you went on that chain. If you had the thought, do you get it? So Betty knows. But now you guys, because you don't know Betty, you indulge her. And Betty, let me tell you how Betty is so that you can learn to love Betty. I'm not dissing Betty, so please understand her. Betty was like, <laughs> my minions. <laughs> that's how she was. You understand? And that's why I keep telling you, we need to grow as a family. You need to understand how Betty is. You see, Betty is the most loving person, but you see, people who have love that has not been refined, they're a bit rough on the edges. You get? So, accept her the way she is. Just the same way we have to accept you the way you are. You understand? Because some of you, if I said your characters, I took one a master class forever. You understand? So if I ever rebuke you, just know we are good. Are we fine? Do we understand? Me, I don't... My wife used to tell me, you don't remember what that guy did? I'm like, Who? Because me, she'll tell you, am I, am I lying? May I forgive you, even if you rob me, by the way. You can rob me, Jana, today I'll give you another deal. You can rob me again, afresh. Okay. 
Um, so so I'm, I'm still lost at why we are casting demons out of Christians. Uh-uh. I said when you cast demons. No, I didn't say you said it. I'm just saying that's what happens in a lot okay. of churches. Let me tell you, that is, again, another form of um, confusion. Okay? First, let's understand. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord. So you know that scripture? Number two, you cannot be filled by light and darkness at the same time. It, 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 it cannot work. However, however, each of us is in a journey. Okay? There are people who have not yet learned how to trust God about money, the people who have not yet learned how to walk uh, in purity, the people who have not learned... You understand? All those are not demons, by the way. It is just you. Listen, Jesus never cast out a single demon called a demon of lust, pride, sinfulness. Never. We created all of them because we didn't understand how we are unable to overcome. Now, can I tell you something? It is God who's allowed those things to continue as he deals with you. A time will come when they will just stop. Sir, it is not demons. So that's the second misconception they told you. That, ah, you're still drinking. Come for deliverance class. So six months of deliverance class. That's not that. Um, third thing. Once you're filled by the Holy Spirit, okay, he's a jealous God. You think, ato, ako, oh, demon kuja, tukaikai hapa? It can't be, okay? So, so understand the light and darkness principle. Next, so you, you can't be possessed and be a demon. It's like being blessed and cursed at the same time. So, uh, you have lost me somewhere. Yes. You're saying... Yeah. English. Thank you. You need attention. <laughs> a time will come when they will go away. Yes. So before they go away, what do I do? I just sit here and continue drinking. No, it says, blessed is he who hungers and thirsts after. Yes. When Peter was about to be tested, Christ didn't say don't fall. He said don't let your faith fail. So that means don't stop believing you'll change. You get. That's really where the test is. You remember the best rate of righteousness that protects your heart? Now let me explain to you. Your heart is where you feel the pain of sin, correct? So to protect your heart, you need your best plate of righteousness. What does that tell you? That you need constantly remind yourself that Christ has forgiven you and made you the righteousness of? In fact, the reason why you repeat the sin is because you feel guilty. It's the funniest thing. So when you start surrendering to God, he'll start giving you victory. There's a psalm I wrote on my, on my Facebook. Let me read it on Sunday. It really blessed my heart. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not his benefits. You remember that psalm? Yeah. Let me... Uh, if you get it before me, let me know. <laughs> yes, Psalms 103, 1 to 5. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is deepest within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Very important. It's very easy to forget his benefits. Eh? Who forgives every one of your iniquities, who heals each one, of your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and corruption, who beautifies and dignifies and crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your mouth with necessity and desire at your personal age and situation, with good so that your youth renewed is like the ego strong, overcoming and soaring. Okay? That's how you do it. Don't, don't let sin be your focus. The righteous man falls down and stands up. So the question is not falling. Everyone falls. The question is standing. Okay? Any other question? Last question? Oh, and by the way, let me just say, finally, you, some of you are getting it. I've seen people impersonating to 50, 100, Bob. Let me tell you, that's giving. That's generosity. You understand? 
don't have, by the way, don't have pedo. You know, in Kuriakos, you are told, show your money the devil. Show the devil your money, okay? So you have to bring your best note. No, God does not work like that, sir. All right? We are done? Are we okay with this deliverance thing? All right? You know how to pray without ceasing now? You know not to worry about cats at night? Okay? And I've told you what to do if they come visit you. Um, yeah. All right? L in fact, let me tell you the last story. There was a particular night I was driving home, and she's not here. So I was talking to one of us, um, um, Nelias. So as we were talking, I'm telling you every five or so minutes, I nearly had an accident. Okay? So I'm like, hey, that motorbike guy, a motorbike guy, if you look at the front of my car, there's a mark because a motorbike guy. You know, you're getting into a junction. You're getting into a junction and the motorbike guy doesn't stop. So he hits into you. And then, bam, bam, like five, six accidents between uh, Poster and Karen. Okay? And, I'm, and she's talking to me. She's like, you don't feel like you need to park the car and pray. You don't feel like you're being attacked. You don't feel like, I told her, all these things are distractions. All the devil wants me to do is to f stop focusing about where I'm going and focus on this thing. It is called the bite of the serpent. Remember when the serpent beat Paul when he was preaching the gospel? What was his reaction? He shook it off. So sometimes you need to learn to shake it off. Shake, shake it off. <laughs> you understand? Don't... Like on, on, on Saturday, everything was late. The lights were late. The sound was late. In fact, we couldn't find our house key. We've landed from the airport. We go to the house key because I didn't shower at the airport, so I needed to shower and I got home. I didn't shower at the hotel. I was tired. So I get... When you don't skip showers. <laughs> so... I get, I, get, I get to the house, the house is locked. So we have to look for a place where I can shower, change, and come for master class. Show up at master class, the guy who's never late is the most late. Okay? So you know what you do? Shakira. You understand? You need to learn these things. Sometimes you give the devil too much credit. And when you do, oh my God, he takes advantage. Amen? May God bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace. Bless you, brothers and sisters. Yeah.